Welcome to New Hampshire, a place full of history and, of course, ghosts. Here are five of the most haunted places in New Hampshire. The Country Tavern Originally a farmhouse dating from the 1700s, the Country Tavern was a popular eatery. Its ghost story might have helped in that, though it's a brutal tale. As the story goes, the country tavern was once owned by a sea captain and his wife. The captain left on a long sea voyage, and when he returned, he was met with quite a surprise. His wife, Elizabeth, had given birth. The problem was, the sea captain had been gone for more than nine months, so the child wasn't his. The captain lost his mind. He murdered the child and threw his distraught wife down a well. Elizabeth survived, and the captain eventually let her out. Destroyed by grief, she attacked her husband, and the sea captain killed her. Over the centuries, Elizabeth was said to haunt the grounds of the country tavern. She'd appear as a woman in white, seen on the edges of a person's vision before vanishing. It may be that she's doomed to wander, searching for her long-lost child. The Ocean-Born Mary House The story of the Ocean-Born Mary House begins with a pirate. In the early 1700s, a pirate named Don Pedro captured a ship It seemed as if the ship's crew and passengers were doomed, but Don Pedro caught sight of a red-haired baby girl on board. For whatever reason, he offered his captors a deal. If they named the baby after his mother, he would spare everyone. And so the child was named Ocean-Born Mary Wallace. Things get weird many years later, when Don Pedro and Mary meet again. The two marry and move into a house in Henniker. One day, Mary discovered the body of the murdered Don Pedro near their home. It was thought he was killed in pursuit of some of his buried pirate treasure. Mary buried Don Pedro under the hearthstone in her kitchen, and then went on to live a long life before dying at age 94. She is buried in the nearby Center Cemetery. Despite that, however, it is said that Mary haunts the ocean-born Mary house. Guests of the home report seeing a red-haired woman with glowing eyes. She seems to be a benevolent spirit, protecting her home and, perhaps, the final resting place of her husband. The Notchland Inn Just who is haunting the Notchland Inn is a bit of a mystery. As one of the legends go, a woman named Nancy Barton died near the inn. She was all set to marry the love of her life, until he ran off with her dowry. Nancy took off after him, straight into a blinding snowstorm. Perhaps she lost her way, or perhaps she lost the desire to live. Either way, she froze to death out there, all alone. Her body was found sitting up on a rock near a brook. Since Nancy died, those staying at the inn report messages being written on their bathroom mirrors, sometimes in steam or lipstick, unsettling to be sure. The forest near the inn are also haunted by Nancy, as hikers hear unearthly crying and even hysterical laughter echoing through the trees. The idea that Nancy was the one haunting the Notchland Inn was challenged when the name Abigail Jones was scrawled upon a mirror by unseen hands. It was later discovered that Abigail spent time at the inn. Could she be the actual spirit inhabiting the Notchland Inn? Toll Hill. This is a unique ghost story because it's a horse 
that's doing the haunting. Once upon a time, a horse got lost in a blizzard near Toll Hill. Desperate, the animal found some measure of shelter in an abandoned building. Sadly, the horse became trapped by the snow and perished. Today, if you spend time around Toll Hill, you might hear the tortured sounds of the doomed horse still trying to escape its icy tomb. The Isles of Shoals I think I'll do a video just on the ghosts of the Isles of Shoals, but we'll touch on a few of them now. The Isles are a group of islands that have seen a lot of history. Smutty Nose Island is haunted by the ghost of accused killer Louis Wagner. Wagner is thought to have murdered two Norwegian girls in a building that burned to the ground just a few years after. It seems Wagner's spirit is trapped there, doomed to wander in limbo for his crime. On Lunging Island, the infamous pirate Blackbeard is said to have buried some of his treasure. Both Blackbeard's ghost and the ghost of one of his many wives have been seen there. Blackbeard may be searching for or guarding his treasure. His wife is seen as a white, shadowy figure, and if you're lucky, or unlucky, depending on your perspective, she will whisper to you that he will return. On another of the islands, perhaps Appledore Island, Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote of two women who met with tragedy, both of whom may still haunt the area. One legend is of Betty Moody's Hole, which is just the worst name. The hole is actually a depression in the rocks near the island's shore. A woman named Betty Moody hid herself and a child in the hole to escape Indians. The child, frightened, began to cry. Betty, fearing for her own safety, killed the child to keep it quiet. Near this spot, another young woman, a school teacher, went to sit on the rocks and stare out at the sea. From nowhere, a great wave struck the woman and carried her off the rocks and into the churning ocean, where she drowned. This stretch of rocky shoreline is said to be a mournful place, and it's not difficult to imagine why. 